in the last video, we set up sort of a lockdown kiosk environment for a computer that you might find at like a coffee shop or a library or a business center in a hotel where all you as the end user have access to is a web browser. But we want to try, just have some fun and explore and experiment. We want to try and pop open a command prompt or gain a little bit more access to this computer rather than simply browsing the web and we don't have a whole lot of functionality like the start menu or icons or anything like that. So let's get to it. In this video, we're gonna try and figure out how we can break out of the kiosk device that we just set up in the previous video, setting up the front face locker tool, which was a free utility anyone could download and try and set up using Microsoft Edge as a web browser inside of a Windows 11 virtual machine to simulate this kiosk. Let's get to it. So I am gonna fire up this Windows 11 virtual machine that we have been playing with. Uh, in the last video, you'll know that we set this up with a low privilege kiosk user, and that will auto log in and then open up a web browser in a full screen maximized display where there aren't any buttons available to us. It's just the content of the web page. You can see here's our kiosk user logging in and we'll get loaded up to this boring basic page of a kiosk breakout. Okay, uh, so I'm using a wireless keyboard right here and we could try to press F11, but that doesn't do anything. Uh, we could try to hit maybe Control Alt Delete or even through the VM, right? We could try and send it because I don't want that go to, through my host. We could try and send that Control Alt Delete key, but that does nothing because front locker or the front face locker tool disabled that for us. Um, we could try an alt tab or hit the windows key, nothing. You could hit control P or control F or control O or control S or any hot key on the keyboard, try and open things up. That doesn't seem to work for us. Uh, what about F1? Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> so if you couldn't tell, F1 will open the help application or help for a specific application and program. Uh, and in Microsoft Edge, apparently it just opens Microsoft.com's website, pressing F1 there. Kind of weird. Uh, so maybe we could bebop around and get a little bit more access to things. Clicking on any specific page, maybe one of them will open something that we might be able to download or preview or have any other weird functionality that might pop open a file system explorer. This is really just clicking around and trying to see if anything might give you anything, right? <laughs> hey, if I see plans or can I download something, can I open and try and sign in here? No, that doesn't work. Uh, you'll notice though, I can't go back. Normally there's a hotkey to alt left and go back on your keyboard, that doesn't work. I can't reach the nav bar to actually move back. Any page that we go to, we're kind of stuck there unless F1 thankfully brings us back to the Microsoft.com as if it were our homepage, as if it were the HQ. Um, maybe we could try a month free of Microsoft 365. Will that give us a download? Uh, we could try to download Word or something. Oh, try for free. How about that? For home. Yeah, please. No, it still needs me to buy it. Gosh, this is annoying. Uh, resources. FAQs. Is there any... Maybe down below at the footer. Privacy. Privacy? Is there like something, oh, can I save or download the terms of use or anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, here's print. Here's print. Oh, okay. So if we have a print dialog, come on. That, that, okay, it's going to preview that print. Um, we could try to use more settings. That doesn't give us any. We could troubleshoot printer issues. Could I print to any specific printers nearby? No. Troubleshooting printer issues. Ooh, that actually pops up a diagnostics troubleshooting wizard. Uh, so this is kind of the gimmick in that if you knew your admin password or the administrator password, you might be able to do a little bit more, right? And we'll actually see an experiment with this because that is how we might have a little bit more progress in the hard track of this. Uh, let's say for the sake of exploration, we could hit the admin password on this. It was a low, it was a weak, it was very insecure password that we could guess. Password one, two, three, password. Password with the at sign or zero. You know, stupid password policy, basic stuff. Uh, this 
ooh, 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 this actually opens a little bit more for us because we could get in the Microsoft privacy statement and we open up a new web browser that we can drag around and now we have the full menu. So this is actually super convenient because we could do specific things in that. Uh, and I'll show you that once we get to it, but I wanna see if this dialog box gives us anything else. No, <laughs> it gives us the useless detecting things. You could give feedback on this, view error details, that doesn't give us anything. And I can't even go back, so that was useless. Whatever. Before we forget, before we go down a rabbit hole that we might be able to explore later, uh, don't forget, we purposefully left sticky keys on for our easy mode experiment here. So if I were to hit shift five times, oop, so I, I opened it up on my host too. <laughs> my, my Windows host totally caught it. But here we go. It says, do you want to turn sticky keys on or off? And this is kind of peculiar, right? Because if you were to turn no, or if, if you actually were to allow this, turning it back on might be harder to do. Did I, did I ruin it? Nope. Oh, okay, cool. We're back. I just need to press sticky keys enough. There is one link here, as you can see, where you can disable this keyboard shortcut in the ease of access keyboard settings. Oh. But the control panel is not found. Front locker seemed to have disabled that. And... <laughs> And the last time I recorded this, last time, uh, excuse me, the last time I was trying to set this up again for that event some time ago, that was one option. That was one vector. You could open up the control panel, then you could navigate to something new, get a file explorer browser open and do things. Uh, it looks like we can't do that now because it has disabled the control panel. Interesting. That gives us though the option one more time to go through with our potential other browser option. So we needed to try and print something, right? We lost our print option on this web page, but going to the privacy page one more time, or if I go to this privacy link, it gives me that option here again, print. Now you could just try and straight up print something and even you don't even have to have the password, the admin password to be able to do that. Like if I were to try and hit print, to try and print it to a PDF, it'll pop open an output, save output dialog box. Now this is where it gets kind of fun because maybe you could see any of these locations and right click on them and Windows 11 gives you that nice fancy functionality. Hey, let's open this in the Windows terminal. End game, right? That's it, easy peasy. Got PowerShell open, but kind of weird. <laughs> I can't enter anything. I'm typing on my keyboard, but you don't see that coming through. The touch keyboard and handling panel service isn't running on your machine. This can prevent the terminal from receiving keyboard input. Ah, okay. So front locker has turned that off, seemingly. What else could we do here? You are in an Explorer dialog browser. However, we can just save things. Not all that helpful. Seemingly, I can't open anything. Could I try to open anything? Let me explore that. Let's go to print one more time. See if we can get this page. Print to open that Explorer dialog box. Give it a moment. Did, I, did we lose it? Did we lose that functionality? Is that game over? Crap. No way, no way, no way. Check your printer, try again, printing failed. Okay, let's get to print one more time. Print to printer, print, please. Give me my dialog box again. <laughs> Did I ruin it? Crap. All right, let's find something else. How about our terms of use? Uh, more resources, pro bono, diversity, no, oh, no, no. Privacy statement that links back to it. Expand all, can I just save this some way somehow? We can do the troubleshoot printer options, but that's kind of a hack because you know the admin password for that. Let's try and download some things. Sitemap. 
this is this I feel like I'm speed running the Microsoft.com website. <laughs> like, gotta be something. About our ads, safety. I can't believe I broke the printer functionality because that was such a good way to do it. Ooh, 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 get the Bing wallpaper app. Yes, please, absolutely. I want Bing wallpaper. Yes. <laughs> cool. That way we could just save the file again. And this is fresh. Like this isn't going to break because of printing. So anyway, doing this, opening the Windows terminal, we know isn't going to work. Um, can we navigate to the location for the um, command prompt? Can we just open up the command prompt? CNB.DND. If I right click this, can I open it? I don't want to save as. I don't want to overwrite cmd.exe. Hello? Computer? All right, just hang for a second. We'll pause. <laughs> I hear... I hear Windows, like, trying to whine. Like, bring. I think it's just straight up broke. I must have crashed something, because this... The X works, but no other things do. Gosh. Okay. Let's reboot. We'll restart. Restart. And I feel like that's in scope. I feel like you can do that as a physical pen tester. You can, you know, turn off and turn on the computer again. That's I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that for, for our scope here. Okay, rebooting. So F1 will bring us to Microsoft. Um, oh, I want to, I don't want an ad for that. I want an ad for, give me an ad for Bing, please download the templates. Yeah. Browse templates. I don't want to get Microsoft 360. I just want to download a template download with, I don't want to buy anything. <laughs> there it is. There it is. There it is. Okay. Get the Bing wallpaper install. Now bring it to some location. Will I crash the computer again? Oh, I need Windows System 32. Let's go to that location. Let's go to CMD. If I right click it, it straight up crashes it. Is that like front face? Is that is that the locker tool that's like not allowing me to right click on CMD.exe? This is kind of fun for me because it, it has new gimmicks and idiosyncrasies that the last time I used this tool didn't have. So let's try it again. There's one other way we can do this. There, there, well, there may very well be more, uh, but there's one way that I know of that we could still abuse and take advantage of this uh, because we can still get that save and open dialog box open. Alrighty. So F1, Microsoft, give me Bing. There it is. All right, install now. So inside of this box, there is another help icon that you might be able to use. If you hit F1, does that open it? It does. So even F1 will open up Microsoft Edge in its regular pure form, right, in your web browser. Now this is one where you have a lot of options. This is where you have a lot of power because over here with this context menu, when you hit the three dots, if you were to open up something else that might, you know, potentially allow you to interact with your machine yourself, the physical file system and everything that you're working with, like the downloads. That's a good option here. Notice this open downloads folder application. Now you get pure file explorer, not just what you might've been using in a save as or a print dialog box. So here you can, of course, again, try to, oh, I guess we can't even open in Windows terminal as an option, but Navigate to where system 32 is. CMD.exe. Can I zoom in? You won't let me? All right. Well, you can modify the properties, right? At this point, we're home free. Let's go like 28. Boom. We can type. We own the system. We can move. Oh, CD. Yeah, CD is the thing that displays. We can get to our desktop. Oh, sorry. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I forgot the username in the desktop. Uh, let's try and go to CD users. <laughs> okay, John. A little Freudian slip. I don't know. Uh, 
in the kiosk directory, of course, you might be able to move into the desktop. And then what's to stop you from opening up the lockdown application? Again, maybe if you could figure out that password, you might be able to turn the lockdown kiosk off. You might be able to just, you know, not have that be on anymore. You might be able to break out of your sandbox. I think that's kind of neat. Um, but of course you would need to know that admin password. That is something that we kind of have to mess with. But if the profile saved, maybe you could display that and figure out and do some more damage. Uh, but this ultimately just being able to pop open the command prompt was our end goal. This is what we were trying to do in the face of simply a white blank screen that said kiosk breakout. So that is the damage done, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and we could explore this a little bit more in the next video where we take a look at what I consider hard mode using the pure official actual Windows assigned access functionality where they give you the functionality to turn your device into a kiosk. We're gonna have some fun with that. So I'll see you in the next video, but I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you had some fun kind of bumping around, trying things on the keyboard and having that persistence, determination, curiosity to see how could we find something new. And it's a little bit of a puzzle. It's just trying to click around and see what's available to us. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do those YouTube algorithm things. Like the video, comment, subscribe, etc. You know the drill. I love you. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much, everybody. With the